welcome everybody to the lowdown on Ryder Town with the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders, 94.1 KRNA, 98.1 KHAK, and the Union Station. I want to once again thank the Union Station for having us each and every Tuesday night at 5.30. The show is half an hour, 5.30 to 6, but as I always like to mention each and every week, people show up beforehand and stay afterward as well. A nice fun event. Family can come on out. We do it every Tuesday night, 5.30 to 6. This is show number 8, which means we only have two shows left after tonight. We have a show next Tuesday, March 27th, and then the finale. Mark your calendars on this one is Tuesday, April 10th, 5.30 to 6. That will be our final show, final lowdown of the season. The audio, the podcast from the last show we did on March 6th is currently up on the KRNA YouTube page, so you guys can check that out. We'll also post a blog later this week that has like the last three or four from the past couple weeks up there, so you guys can check that out. I'm joined on stage tonight by head coach Mark Carlson, but also players Graham Slager and Tyler Jubinville. So we'll get into the questions in just a moment. I want to remind everyone, if you haven't yet had a chance, you can sign up for the autograph jersey in the back. You can sign up each and every week, so even if you've been out to the show before, you can sign up each and every week you come out and maybe raise those odds, raise those chances of being the winner when we give that away on the finale, on the show night. We have our players up here, we're getting to questions, and Coach, I figured the first thing I'd want to cover with you, something that we're talking about, we theme this March Madness tonight, and we've, we've got a spring type of blazer, but since the last time we talked, we uh, have some pretty big news for the Rough Riders and the city of Cedar Rapids, sign a long-term lease with the city that includes arena improvements and upgrades over the years. As someone who's been there from the very beginning, your thoughts on that, uh, the long-term future for the Rough Riders, pretty nice to get that in the books with the city of Cedar Rapids, and the fans know that the Rough Riders are, are here for quite a while to stay. Yeah, well, the, the first thing was when I, um, I was really disappointed when I went to city council meeting that I didn't wear a blazer. Oh, uh, yeah, that might have. I mean, it doesn't sound like it affected it at all. It, it came out of things, but there's a lot of people wearing blazers, and I didn't have went on, so it was, it was not, it was, I, I was really disappointed. You can call me if you want to borrow one sometime. I got full of That was the first thing I thought was to ask you to drive one over. Yeah, I, I, I'm on call. If you need me to deliver one, I'm there. Um, but anyway, it was uh, great news. Uh, Doug Miller and I were there, and it was uh, an, an exciting day, and um, there's, uh, there's been a lot of great days here and great times over 19 years, and uh, with the new lease, there's a lot of great days ahead and a lot of exciting things that are going to happen, so we're very excited about it as an organization. Now, Coach, I'll also ask you three out of four possible points on the road this past weekend as we talk a little bit about, about the hockey action. Does it feel like this team is gaining some momentum, a lot of consistency? Seems like you're putting a lot of wins together, but also just consistent play on the ice. Yeah, I mean, the guys have improved all, you know, all year long and been through a lot of different challenges since the preseason, and we're real proud of the way that they've continued to work and, and improve, I think, each and every week. And I think we're coming together nicely. We, it was nice we got to do some extra team bonding, sitting on the, on the side of the highway there for three hours when the bus was broken down and blew a tire. So I mean, that, that contributed to the, uh, the togetherness on the, on the weekend, for sure. Is that going to be uh, maybe something you work in now? Is that like a routine now? Like a game plan now? <laughs> I don't know if we're going to go that far. Um, but, uh, but we did have some extra time together. And it was it's good we had the, the satellite for this trip so the boys were able to watch the NCAA tournament because that had started. So. Well, that plays into the March Madness theme. I guess, guys, I'll ask both of you before we get into your bios, what's it like when you're stranded on the bus? I guess you had something to watch, something to do, but how's that playing to think, Graham? I'll start on your end. Yeah, uh, I'm big on Netflix, so I watched a few episodes of my Netflix show, House of Cards, so I was able to uh, watch a few of those, and uh, I heard a lot of reactions for March Madness, so you could hear the screams in the background, uh, big shots being made and whatnot. Tyler, how about you? How do you deal with that? Uh, yeah, it wasn't too enjoyable. It was already a long trip. So <laughs> wasn't happy with another three-hour layover, but uh, just took a nap, wasted time, watched a little of the basketball. It's good. Now, as far as player bios, Graham, I'll start with you. Kind of let us know where you're from and your journey to get here to, to Cedar Rapids. Uh, yeah, so I'm from South Bend, Indiana, uh, and uh, coach drafted me this last draft in uh, the Phase 2 draft, and just came out to the summer camps, and uh, I've been here since. And Tyler, how about you? Where are you from, and how'd you wind up here with the Rough Riders? I'm from Gilbert Plains, Manitoba. It's in Canada. And I was drafted by Fargo a couple years ago. So I went to camp this year and didn't work out there. So coach gave me a call to come here in the summer. Came to camp. And now, Coach, as I usually do, if you could give a few moments to talk about each of these guys and why you decided to bring them on board. Sure, yeah. Um, well, we had, uh, 
with Swags, we had, you know, had an opportunity to, to coach against him for a couple of years and knew knew a lot about him. And um, you know, we we're happy that he was available and that we were able to draft him. And then uh, with uh, with Jules, we, we knew a lot about him too, just because we. You know, we, we keep a pretty good handle on all those leagues, and, and, and we knew that he was a real good player there in, uh, in Winkler in the Manitoba League. And, um, you know, when, when he was available, it was, it was pretty simple for us to make the decision to bring him on board here. Now, when we talk about how you guys got involved in the game of hockey, Graham, I know your father was a hockey coach at Notre Dame. I have to believe that probably played a role in, in getting involved in the sport. So what, what, what else went into to getting into hockey? Yeah, of course, uh, with my dad. I mean, uh, as soon as I could start walking, he put me in skates, and we had carpet in our house. So I, uh, he put skates on me. I would walk around the house on the carpet uh, with these blades on. And, uh, and my mom is also from Minnesota. She's from a hockey family. Both of her both of her brothers played uh, college, and um, I have a cousin who plays at uh, Minnesota State, where Reese Mullick is, and uh, so we're a hockey family on both sides. Now, did you have any knowledge of the Rough Riders before you got here, the team, any of that before you showed up in Cedar Rapids? Yeah, I did uh, playing the last two years. I was uh, fortunate enough to play against them, play a few games in the stable. Uh, didn't do too well when we came here, uh, pretty hostile environment, but I knew it was a great place to play, and uh, uh, my dad and Coach Carl and have uh, known each other for a pretty long time, and so I knew of Coach Carlson and uh, interacted with him a few times. So what you're saying overall is it was a lot better to be on the home side in the stable. Oh, of course. A lot better to be yeah, on that side of things. Of but Coach, uh, did you have much knowledge before him knowing his dad before he actually got into the recruiting process or bringing him on board? Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, I've known Andy. Uh, We've known each other a long, long time, and and then um, you know it, it always helps. I mean, we think that you know getting to know the parents is a, an important part of the uh, you know the process as, as we go through these things. So we knew what kind of you know what kind of family um, you know Swags was coming from, and that certainly was a positive. Now Tyler, obviously you're from Canada, uh, that probably played a bit of a role in, in liking hockey. But what, what else? What else went into that uh, in your love for the sport? Ah, uh, there's a junior team close by, about 20 minutes away. So my parents took me to a lot of those games and just liked it, watching it, and fell in love with it, and then just kept going with it. Now talking about future plans, Graham, I know you're headed to play at Notre Dame, correct? Yeah. Sure. So uh, with your dad being the coach there, I assume that kind of went into decision. What else went in to, to going to Notre Dame? Uh, just uh, everything it has to offer with athletics. It's a great athletic school, but then education as well. Uh, it's on really good degree from there. And at the end of the day, it's kind of my mom's decision. My dad always says, like, <laughs> where your mom likes better, that's where you should go. So uh, that's where uh, I decided to go. That's where she liked better. So uh, decided to go to back home, and uh, I think she'll appreciate me being home for the next four years. Now, is playing for your dad a net positive or a down? Do you have to kind of watch your back when you're playing for your dad? How's that work? Uh, he's on the road a lot, so I think that'll help. But uh, <laughs> he hasn't coached me a ton. There's a few times here and there. One time when I was younger, uh, we played at some rink. It might, might have been in Muskegon, and I scored a goal, and it was like we were up 6 nothing. I uh, I celebrated a little too hard, so he benched me for the rest of the game. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Coach, it must be nice coaching these coaches' kids. You know, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. I would think so. Tyler, now you committed to play at Bemidji State, correct? What went into that decision? How'd you, how'd you go on that? Uh, they just started talking to me, showing interest in me. So went on a visit there and saw the facilities. It's all new staff. It's really nice and great coaching staff there. So decision was pretty easy, nice and close to home. Now for both of you guys, Grandma, I'll start with you. Biggest adjustment in coming to Cedar Rapids, it can be both uh, on the ice but also maybe just out beyond the ice as well. Biggest adjustment me you had to make? Uh, I don't know. I, I lived uh, last two years I had a roommate so this year I, I was by myself uh, and uh, but they'll tell me cook a little bit here or there. I'm not too good but I'll try to help out with some cookies or whatnot and uh, so I'm trying to cook a little bit more. But Do you have something that you consistent like can just consistently go with? No. You're still searching? No yeah it's still searching. But Tyler how about you? You're a uh, biggest adjustment coming here to Cedar Rapids. Adjustment. I'm not too sure either. Uh, I've had a roommate the past two years so maybe that too but yeah, I don't know. Now, you know, like every time I have players on, I kind of research you guys. Obviously, we have a lot of nice fun facts and stories about you guys coming up in the speed round from your housing families. But then I do a little independent research, and sometimes I just go to the hometowns and see what I can find. Now, Tyler, in your case, you're about 250 miles northwest of Winnipeg, right? Yeah. Okay, now, what's the deal? I've heard about this, never been up there, but the coldest corner in Winnipeg.
windiest corner in the country. Yeah, have you heard about this? Do you know about this? No, it's I supposed haven't. to be at Portage and Maine. If you stand on that corner, that's supposed to be the coldest coach. Did you know this? I, I, in what town? In Winnipeg. In, oh, in Winnipeg. In Winnipeg, yeah. I've yeah. heard about this, yeah. I have heard. Uh, Tyler, have you, you never stood on that corner or anything? I have been to Portage of Maine. It's pretty big. It's corner. pretty. You hear about lots, but I've yeah. heard about that. I was it's looking for maybe, big. like, I don't know, some insider information. Like, for real, it's the windiest, coldest. No, I can't say You can't it. say no, for sure? That. No. Okay. But uh, when you, what's the coldest day or temperature you ever had uh, maybe growing up? In and around that area, can you remember uh, living in Iowa? We can relate. I'm not too sure Fahrenheit, but uh, Celsius would be probably like a little, a little worse than like minus 40. Okay, that isn't. That's that's pretty cold. Yeah, that's pretty cold. So you didn't have a big adjustment coming here as far as the weather was concerned. You're pretty used to this. No, it's actually a little nicer here, but a little nicer. It's like a heat wave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Graham, what's the uh, best thing about growing up in South Bend? Obviously, a college town, Notre Dame. What's uh, what's the best thing about growing up there? Uh, this Chinese restaurant. J.W. Chen's <laughs> my go-to spot. So is it like a college hangout? Is it kind of like where all the college kids go? Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's really close to campus, but uh, my family and I would always go there like Friday nights before a Notre Dame hockey game. So we usually hit that up and go to the game and uh, support my dad and support the team. Now, what's your go-to there as far as a dish is concerned? Uh, honey chicken. She doesn't ask what we want. She just asks how many. So <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you guys are yeah, set. Yeah. She knows our order pretty well now. All right, coaches, you drink a uh, drink of water. Have you ever been to that? spot in South Bend? I haven't, but I usually, I'm in South Bend usually a couple times a year, so next time I'm going to hit this place. Yeah, you have to hit it up. Yeah. Before we get into the speed round with all these great housing family questions for the guys, I'll remind everyone, two games coming up for the Rough Riders this weekend, Friday against Green Bay, and then Saturday right back in the stable to face the same opponent, Green Bay. Friday night is player card giveaway, I know that's a big one, and then Saturday is guns and hoses, that's always a good event every year. So first, before we get into the, these hard-hitting questions, that uh, have gone through email. I'll just ask you guys to kind of tell us a little bit about your housing families, who you live with, and, and what it's like. Graham, I'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I live with the Toms. Uh, really great family. Uh, we mess around a pretty decent amount. So uh, Hayden and I, the son, we play Xbox a little Fortnite here and there. And then Abby and I, when The Bachelor was on, that was kind of our Monday night thing. Uh, okay. kind of thing. So we'd watch The Bachelor together. Uh, maybe have some Mike and Ikes too. So we watch that in the basement together. Okay, you already gave some of these hints away. But we'll get deeper into these questions. I got some stuff coming up. Tyler, how about you? Who do you live with? What's it been like? Uh, Cindy and Terry Becker and their daughter Julie and their son Tyler. And it's been great. They treat me like family and uh, just same thing, play a little Fortnite. There's a foosball table downstairs, ping pong, so play a little bit of that. But. Fortnite's big. Yeah. For now, Graham, speaking of that, you know, you already mentioned video games, Xbox and the whatnot. I heard that uh, when it comes to Fortnite, not real good at it. No, it's not my forte. Uh, put a lot of effort into it, but uh, not the results I look for. <laughs> now, as far as, far as candies are concerned, Mike and Ike's, how long have you had the passion for those? I don't know. Uh, we went to Sam's Club one day, and uh, Abby and I saw this big old bag of Mike and Ike's where you couldn't pass up the, the chance to get a big bag of Mike. Big how, bag of Mike's. How long did that bag last? Uh, like three weeks, potentially. Not yet. I don't know. Oh, say. Wow, it was pretty quick going through this. Have you, have you re-upped since then? No, we haven't. Uh, she's been baking a little bit more now, so a couple pies. We have a pie cake in, so it's a pie inside of a cake. And, uh, Whoa! Uh, hold the phone on yeah, this one. How did that come? How did that come about? Uh, so she's kind of in charge of birthday cakes. Actually, one of my first weeks here, uh, my both siblings had a cook off for uh, butter cake, and she claimed she had a concussion. But uh, I don't know. I just think she's not that good at it. But my both brother actually beat her. Uh, so bragging rights were in the house for cakes, and uh, so my both dad for his birthday wanted a pie cake, and. and uh, so she practiced a couple times, and now she's done it a few times now. So what kind, what flavor, what kind of pie do you put inside? Like how does, how do the flavor combinations work out with these? I'm, uh, I'm curious. We got different combos. Uh, the last one she's done was like an apple pie inside of, inside of a vanilla cake. So yeah, it's pretty good. Well, pretty coach, have you ever, ever had this combination? I don't know if I've ever even heard of that. I might be in the dark on this. I have not. Now, Tyler, this might be one of the better stories I've been relayed from the housing families. Heard there was an incident back in November. Is this, like, sounding any alarm bells? No, not yet. All right. So I'm just going to call it the um, rollerblade and bike
bike ride story. Uh, Is that bringing up? Yeah, that's ringing a bell. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit of details on that? I mean, I've got the full story at my hands, but sometimes it's more fun when you guys you guys spill it. What exactly uh, happened on that night? It was kind of a chilly night, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a roommate at the time, and there's about a there's a Chipotle about oh, I can't remember how far it is. Maybe like. Four miles, four kilometers, I can't remember. Okay. I don't know, but... Pretty good distance, though, yeah, unless you're riding in a car. But you yeah, guys weren't doing that. No, we were no. doing that. I really he biked. And we went about, like, we got outside, just like our T-shirts and maybe a hoodie, I don't remember, but pretty cold. So we went and bundled up, put our mitts and toques on, and went out and, yeah, went the four miles or four kilometers, whatever it was. And so what was the mission? What what did you want to get on that bike ride and the, and the rollerblading? It was a day off, so just thought we should get some exercise. I heard there was like an ice cream or something at the end of the rainbow. Like you guys were, had something in mind. Yeah, I think it might have been orange leaf too in there. Oh, uh, orange, okay. <laughs> Did you, uh, and, a, and a Wendy's Frosty, I heard. Wendy's? Does that ring a bell? I, I think it was orange leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually get it? Yeah, oh yeah. Got it. So now, like, when in the journey did you go, maybe this wasn't a great idea? Yeah, like about halfway there. But about halfway there? Yeah, might, have, might as well finish it. So. Now, how did you get the uh, stamina to go back? I mean, going there, maybe you're like, hey, I got our eyes on the prize, but then when you have to go back, how do you how do you find the reserve to I do that? Like, on the way back, there was a big hill, so that was nice. You got the, oh, you got to go on the that. decline. Yeah, okay, it was, yeah. It was still pretty tough, yeah. The coach, whenever yeah. I hear these stories, I have to ask if you heard about any of this stuff. This sounds like quite the expedition that they went on. Yeah, this is the first. This is the first. <laughs> this is the first. Yeah. And now, Graham, you know, I heard that uh, when it comes to video games, not that great, but you also had the opportunity to play a little basketball with the Special Olympics guys, and I heard that didn't go so great either. Uh, yeah, I'm not too good at basketball either. Uh, more of a passer than a shooter. That's what I heard. You yeah, have some great passes yeah, in there. Yeah, it's kind of my forte. Uh, at home, we have a little basketball court. Uh, all I got to say, I'm probably the best knockout player, even though I can't make shots. I just kind of throw it up there and I get the rebound, but uh, uh, we have good battles out there. That's a good technique. Yeah. And, I mean, you're just a facilitator. Sometimes you need people exactly. who can shoot, you need people who can pass. You got it. Yeah. Uh, Graham, also, the other thing is you're quite involved with your housing family's life. You go to quite a few of their kids' games. Uh, you get involved. What's it been like getting involved with the housing family and kind of being able to, to get involved and become part of the family? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, they come to my games. They make signs, uh, pretty funny ones. Uh, when I go for the second period, so I usually put them up, so I look at them and I get a good chuckle out of it. But uh, Hayden starts soccer this week, so we'll see how uh, he does with that. Uh, not sure how well that'll go, but it uh, should be funny for sure. Now, have there been any like really creative signs that they've made, like something that really stands out? Uh, there's so many. Uh, like One time, uh, Abby called me an ice princess and put my face on a sign, or uh, I don't even know what else. There's, there's been too many. But that's a good one. Yeah. Did, did they have like a glitter design or anything throwing yeah, the sparkles around? I think there might have been some glitter. Uh, they put my face on it too, and then she drew like a princess gown around me. So that yeah, was pretty funny. That's good. That's yeah. that's artistic. Good yeah, creativity. Good. Tyler, and I heard it uh, when you first got here. Obviously, you're from Canada originally. I heard it took a little while for you and your housing family to kind of adjust to the Canadian accent. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I've noticed a few times they think I have an accent. I don't notice it, but... So I heard one specific incident where, you know, you'd have, maybe they'd have a little trouble understanding you, and so you guys have kind of like a lost in translation moment, and then you'd say, what's that? Sorry, but they thought you were calling him sir yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. So it's a little bit of like, yeah, yeah. yeah but you eventually you guys figured that out all good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's good now. What was the moment where you broke through and you realized, I think we're all good now. We don't have to worry about any uh, any miscommunication anymore. Was there a moment where you're like, I think I'm fully adjusted now? I, I think they've adjusted to my accent now, but uh, there's still a few few words like, oh, I can't even think of any, but like, uh, we just say differently and they don't know what that is or I don't know what they're talking about, but yeah, we find a few of them. You sorted it out. Yeah. Coach, have you ever had a player come over now? We've had some international players, obviously, that we've uh, you've expressed you know you had to kind of get to know the language or whatnot they had to get to learn english when guys come from just canada from the east coast do you have to adjust if they talk too fast or anything like that you're an east coast guy so i guess you're kind of used to it in the first place right yeah I, I, we've had so many uh yeah players from you know from all over that uh usually just adapt pretty quick yeah guys how about uh, favorite nhl player and team i always do this graham 
Uh, I don't really have a favorite NHL team. I just root for players more than anything. Just knowing some the comfort Notre Dame and uh, whatnot. But my dad being from like the Detroit area, I've liked the Red Wings. But then uh, I played in Chicago growing up, so I was big Kane and Taze fan. So I like the Hawks as well. Tyler, how about you? Favorite team? Favorite player? No, I'm a big Leafs fan and uh, Austin Matthews. Now, Graham already told us about his favorite hometown, Neal Spot. How about yours? Do you have something that you got to hit up if people are in and around your hometown, your area? Ah, uh, yeah, my hometown's pretty small. It's only about like 800 people, so it's not really any restaurants. Maybe like a coffee spot in the gas station or something like that. But sure. about 20 minutes down the road, there's a bigger town, I'd say. Probably Boston Pizza. Okay. Now, how many, uh, uh, is this like a one stoplight town? Give us an idea how big or small is this town. No stoplights. No stoplights? <laughs> okay. We got some towns in Iowa. People can relate to that for yeah, sure. It's the highway that goes through it. And then. And now, speaking of uh, housing family meals, I know, Graham, you talked about the pie inside the cake, but do you have a go-to, a favorite meal that you just love at the housing family? Uh yeah, they're called Slaggy Sliders. Uh, we kind of came up with them this year. Uh, first started with, uh, so we had to take like, these dough balls and put uh, like, hamburger meat in it, and so it's like a slider, but then now we've kind of progressed, and we put like pizza sauce and like pepperoni and sausage in it, or uh, buffalo, like shredded buffalo chicken, and yeah, they're pretty good. It's more uh, post-game type of thing. Wow. At home, we make it. Coach, I can tell by your facial expressions, you might have to hit this up for a, for a yeah. game meal. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Now, Graham, the creativity with the food, how's this come about? You guys seem to be doing some pretty cool stuff over there. Uh, yeah, it's mostly Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we'll see something on there and we'll like kind of watch it. Abby and I usually, and then we'll send it to my brother, mom, and she'll be like, give it a whirl or whatever. So. Now, now, Tyler, that's a tough act to follow, but do you have a favorite housing family meal, something that you go to automatic? Uh, definitely Cindy's mac and cheese. She makes some good mac and cheese. Yeah, really good. That sounds pretty good. Anything yeah. really unique about it, something you really like? Some thrown in. You know, mac and cheese goes in so many different directions. Yeah, I don't know how she makes it, but there's a lot of cheese in it. That, that helps. But That's always a good call. I don't know. Yeah, it's always nice when she brings it home from the daycare like that. Now, Grandma, I know you say you're pretty close with your housing family, with the Billa brothers and whatnot. I heard that your Billa siblings, you know, have a bit of a prank streak going on. Uh, you want to fill us in on that? Yeah, so first off, it started, hey, I kind of had an idea to go to Abby, so Hayden and I got Abby, and we put uh, water cups all around the room, so she came home and couldn't get to her room, couldn't get anything, so it took about like an hour and a half to uh, pour all the water, and then next, like a couple days later, Abby came to me, and she was like, hey, you want to get Hayden? I was like, sure, and uh, we took the shredded paper, put it on like the fan in his room, so when he got home, he turned on his fan, and shredded paper went everywhere, uh, and then they decided to team up against me a couple of times. Uh, I came home, I think I uh, might have been from a road trip or something, and uh, I tore the paper, I think it was seven rolls or something like that, like hanging from the ceiling and like all around, like wrapped in my wow. computer. And then uh, a few weeks ago, I come out after a game and uh, my billing mom grabs her phone out and I see her like on her camera. I'm like, all right, was she gonna take a picture or what? And then they all start laughing. I'm like, you guys probably like saran wrapped my car. It's like, all right, so I walked out and uh, sure enough, my car was saran wrapped. And uh, <laughs> yeah. now, how long did it take to undo that? Uh, I guess I didn't bring enough supplies, so it didn't take too long. But they definitely could have got me good if uh, they really wanted to. And it was a cold day, so they didn't want to sit out in the cold for too much longer. So, do you have a prank in the works right now? Something on the on the top of your mind? Uh, they just have to keep their heads up. So that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, I mean, it kind of feels like this has like an eeny meeny miny mo pattern to it. Are you like the next? up or has the, the wheel kind of turned a little bit on this one? I, I, I couldn't tell you. It's all jumbled mess right now. It's I mean, random. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like the last, the Natty a couple a couple days ago, I think, uh, put salt in my water. I have a big old water jug so she filled it with salt. Uh, but, uh, so she's probably next on my list. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go. Eyes out. Yeah. If you want to do it on stage now, you can do one of these if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not, not going to go there? Yeah, she's fine. She knows what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tyler, I just have to ask this the way it was typed out because I have no idea what this means. French maid. You know, you know what's, you know anything about this? I don't think it's a French maid. Halloween party. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I mean, uh, uh, the team had like a Halloween costume party at uh, Coach's house, and uh, yeah, me and my roommate went to. It was like a, I think it was like a twenty dollar outfit. We got it pretty cheap, and yeah, it was just a bunch of skirts and. It's pretty revealing, so. No, it's pretty revealing. Yeah, yeah oh, well, that's crazy. 
coach, when you showed up, did you go, hey, maybe uh, a new costume? Did you try something new? Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I remember a little bit, but uh, they're, 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 everyone had something different, so it was a lot, there was a lot, a lot going on. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, I kind of lied because beforehand they showed me a picture of it right before the show started. Uh, yeah. yeah, I also heard there was like a Minnie Mouse costume, too, yeah, involved. Yeah, that was my roommate, yeah. Yeah, how'd you guys come up with these? Uh, how did this idea come uh, up? We didn't even know, like, we didn't have the idea of going, like, as that. This first, we just went to the store. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I don't know. But uh, just went there and looked around and found those were pretty cheap. So thought we'd go with that. Coach, did you have a favorite costume from that party? Oh, boy. I'd have to have re refresh my memory. I don't know. There was a lot of good ones. Graham, what'd you, what'd you do? Uh, so Kyle Luth and I, uh, he was a hot dog bun and I was a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's coordinated. Yeah, That's yeah, good. Yeah, it was a pretty cheap costume, so uh, it worked out. But uh, I think my favorite one might have been uh, Liam Walsh. He went as uh, Chris Ibsen, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty uh, dead on with his uh, impersonation. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. good pick, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Now, we were talking about food and whatnot, and Graham, you told us what you liked, and you guys are creating different stuff, but I heard it doesn't matter, no ham. Yeah, no ham. I don't know. I just, ever since I was little, I just haven't liked ham. Did you have a bad experience with ham? I actually you get have, sick I have no idea. I just have never liked ham. But on the other end of the spectrum, I heard when it comes to salsa, you're the guy, a connoisseur. You're like a salsa champ. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty picky with my salsa guacs. Uh, yeah, so. Do you make your own? Uh, not really. There's a little, uh, there's a farmer's market back uh, in South Bend that my mom gets some uh, pretty fresh salsa from. Oh, so you like organic salsa? We're talking like, yeah, yeah. do you have a favorite, like if people are like, hey, what brand salsa do you have somewhere? It's like, hey, this isn't as good as the farmer market style, but if you need to get by. My mom has always got like, uh, like this salsa from Target that's always been pretty good like this peach salsa so oh peach salsa okay yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. you got variety coach are you a salsa fan I, I do like salsa we're getting exotic now oh, yeah, it's real exotic we got fruit salsas different kind of salsas Tyler are you a salsa fan no definitely not a salsa guy <laughs> no definitely not a salsa guy <laughs> and we were talking a little bit about community events Graham what's something you've really enjoyed doing out in the community I know the Special Olympics you're involved with that yeah. uh, I've liked going to uh, the Freedom Foundation it's always been it's been good going to help out there and just see their faces like they really appreciate appreciate us being there but we also appreciate all that they've done for us as well so it's just a good opportunity to interact with some different people in Cedar Rapids. Uh, Tyler how about you a favorite event or something you've done out in the community? Uh, yeah there's been a few good ones but I have to say that we go to me and Luke go to Taylor Elementary School go there every Tuesday for an hour and just kind of help them with their math and just kind of uh, interact with them I guess it's pretty fun. Now we talked a little bit about what you guys like to do but what are your uh, main hobbies what are your go-to's when you're not playing hockey when you're off the ice Graham? Uh, so at the beginning of the year my dad gave me a stack of books about seven of them he said yeah I'll try to get through all of them probably read half of one so I <laughs> can't really call that a hobby uh, but uh, no I play a little mini stick with my Bill brother so that's pretty fun and uh, uh, I, don't know, I watch Netflix and I'm a big movie guy so I like watching movies and then uh, I brought a keyboard as well so I, uh, pra I don't know sometimes I'll mess around on the keyboard a little bit There's some music talents there yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm a big uh, I was actually in middle school I was in band so there was like a symphony band and then I was also in the jazz band too so drum set and then uh, over the years I've just learned piano over on YouTube and whatnot, just mimicking more than anything a few weeks back I think we even talked about maybe like the possibility of a Rough Riders boy band you'd be, yeah. a, you'd be a valuable asset in that oh for sure for I bring sure. a lot to the table yeah All right. the guys are going to have to keep that in mind yeah. Tyler how about you hobbies off the ice what you like to do uh, seems great I like, I like movies so a little bit of Netflix Netflix, uh, play little mini sticks, ping pong with the billet kids, uh, uh, I don't know what else, golf, I like the golf in the summer, I haven't really done it here, but. Go-karts? Oh yeah, we've been go-karting too, that's fun. Yeah. I team the other day too, yeah. There you go. Uh, you're ruthless with go-karts? Is that the word? I don't know, they think so, but I don't know, a little bumping, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you got some this is the one time that the housing family has gone back and forth with a player up on stage always something with the lowdown on Ryder Town that's pretty cool you know this is the March Madness edition and you guys had some time maybe when the bus was broken down how are your, uh, how are your brackets looking Graham did you fill one out no I didn't fill one out uh, with my lacking basketball skills I don't follow it too much but uh, it's the fun to watch the upsets and whatnot, and 
Uh, I don't have a bracket. Did you uh, have you kind of like formed a favorite team now? Someone you kind of gravitate to from what, watching it? No, I haven't. No, no one. Tyler, how about you? Did you fill out a bracket? I didn't fill out a bracket either. No. Do you have a team that you're going for? Like some that you kind of rested on? Not really. I know the one team with that about 16 to 1. Yeah. That, I don't know what the name is, but <laughs> yeah. Well, if they went, went far, I don't know. Yeah, UMBC, I think. Yeah, University yeah, of Maryland, Baltimore County. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. 30 out, bud. What's that? 30 back out. Yeah, they lost oh, that's second round. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like yeah, that. Uh, I kind of gravitated to that Loyola Chicago. They're the ones with the 98 year old nun. She's like she prays with them before games. Did you guys heard about that? Yeah, she's kind of like the sensation right now. Coach, did you fill out a, a bracket for the tourney? I did. And how's that going? I did. It's uh, it's going all right. Did you stick with any East Coast teams like Villanova or gravitate to any, any of those? I, I did go with Nova. To win it all? I did. Okay, there you go. We're inside the knowledge. And then, guys, I have to ask you, your favorite uh, favorite memory in the game of hockey as we wrap up? Graham, something come to mind for you? Yeah, last year I was fortunate enough to win uh, a world championship, and so that was just an awesome experience to be able to do that. But then I was able to play Notre Dame last year, too, at Notre Dame, and that was fun to look over and see my dad on the bench and to see all these people that I've grown up uh I don't know, just uh, growing up with, and it was an awesome experience to play in my hometown. And what's it like when you basically compete against your dad? What's that like? It's funny. I mean, we're like a very competitive family, so uh, I don't know, it was good. But like at the end of the day, like we went through the handshake line, and we just had a big hug. Just it was just awesome to uh, kind of share that experience with him. It was just, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people there, but like we kind of just shared that moment between the two of us. And Tyler, how about you? Favorite moment? Something that sticks out in your years playing hockey? I probably say about, I think it was four years ago, uh, I went in the provincials, you guys would call it states here, but yeah, that was pretty fun, it's always fun winning, so. Now as we wrap up, I always like to give you know, one last chance, uh, guys, Graham, Tyler, did I miss anything? Like, is there something that you guys really want to throw out there? Any jabs at any other players while they're up on stage? You know, it's just, just open season right now. No, Graham, anything? No, there's not that. Exactly. Nothing? No story? Like, maybe some stories you want to keep hidden that didn't come out? Skeletons in the closet? Anything? No, I don't think there's not anything. It's all good? Yeah, Tyler, really good. how about you? No, I can't think of anything, now. Coach, can you think of anything? Well, I, just, I just wanted to, just for a second, I just want to thank everybody that, you know, that comes out to the show. And I um, also wanted to send a special thanks to some of our fans that are here tonight that that were in uh, Walker Arena there in Muskegon over the weekend. A round of applause Thank for you. that. Uh, it's uh, you know pretty cool for the players for sure, and, and even for the coaches to, especially when you don't expect it, and you you set two feet on the ice to walk to the vis visitors bench, and you and you see our fans sitting right there. So that was really really cool. So. Thank you from the entire team and from the entire organization. We appreciate it. And guys, I'll ask you as long as we're talking about that. What did that feel like as players when you step out on the ice and you say, "Hey, we got a little bit of a hometown feel." Yeah, it was cool. You hear the cowbells and uh, they're ringing <laughs> on, so it was cool. Especially after a win Saturday, uh, I think they were down there and we were all going nuts in the locker room. And all you hear is these cowbells going nuts <laughs> and all. And so it was uh, awesome to have them there, and uh, can't thank them enough for making that trip out. Tyler, how about you? I mean, I know. Being a native of Cedar Rapidian, there's nothing more synonymous than the cowbells and the Rough Riders. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't expect anyone to be there. You know, it's a long trip, so it's pretty cool that they came out and yeah, skated on the ice, heard the cowbells, and took a look up and yeah, saw the green and white cowbells. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Good way to wrap up this show on the Lowdown on Rider Town. I want to thank you guys, Graham and Tyler, for being here with us tonight. Thanks for showing up and giving us a few minutes. Of course, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Coach, thanks as always. Thanks, cool. I want to remind everyone two games for the Riders coming up this weekend: Friday against Green Bay, and then Saturday in the stable once again against Green Bay. Player card giveaway night on Friday and then Guns and Hoses night on Saturday night. We'll be back here next Tuesday, March 27th for another lowdown on Rider Town. It'll be our ninth and second to last show. Hope to see everyone out at the Union Station next week, 530 on Tuesday night for another lowdown on Rider Town. Thanks everybody.